Look, I know. This video has been made a thousand times already, but despite all the GNU Linux content I've made, I've never really spoken about why I personally use Linux. This video isn't intended to convert anyone. I'm not a Linux evangelist. I have more important things to worry about than the OS you run. And if you're not a Linux user, I'm sure you have your reasons for it. This video is just to share my own thoughts on the matter. My reasons for using Linux probably aren't what you expect. A lot of people say things like, Linux is better than Windows because Windows costs money. I don't care about the price. If it's a good product and it's reasonably priced, I don't have any problems paying for it. The reason many people don't activate Windows is because a Windows license isn't worth the price Microsoft charges for it. Plus, there's very little penalty to not activating. There's also the Linux is better for privacy and security argument. And while there is some truth to this, your level of privacy and security are dependent on many different factors, like how your system is configured, the services you use, and the decisions you make. With that said though, let's get into the list. Reason number one, the decline of Windows. When I was a kid, I genuinely liked Windows. I was highly interested in its development, and I liked how each version, yes, including Vista, had its own charm and aesthetic without a bunch of crap. I still like old versions of Windows today in a nostalgic or aesthetic sense. However, I feel things gradually got worse after Windows 8. I didn't immediately hate Windows, but I slowly lost interest in it. I built my first PC at the age of 13, but I only installed Windows 10 because of drivers and games not running on Windows 7. So what exactly did I not like about new versions of Windows? Well, they became more messy, more intrusive, more restrictive, and more bloated. And with Windows 11, things have gone from bad to worse, with Copilot, arbitrary system requirements, and Microsoft accounts becoming mandatory instead of just annoying. Yes, you can bypass some of these things with registry edits and PowerShell scripts, but there's no guarantee they'll keep working. And my point is, why should you have to do it? Although I started using Linux before Windows 11 was even announced, there's no doubt that Windows 11 has reinforced my decision to stay on Linux. Reason number two, Mac OS isn't for me. You might be wondering, if you're not a fan of Windows, why don't you just use Mac OS? I've even met a lot of Linux users who see Mac OS as the lesser of two evils because it's Unix based and they don't like Microsoft. But if I had to choose one or the other, but it's mostly for practical reasons. Morally, I think Apple and Microsoft are just as bad as each other, but for different reasons. Now, I have owned a Mac before, so I'm not just hating on Apple because it's cool. However, I find Macs and macOS to be very limited. macOS may not be as annoying as Windows, but it's a lot more restrictive. To run macOS, you pretty much have to use a Mac, where self-serviceability and upgrade potential are very limited, if not impossible. Especially since the move to Apple Silicon means Hackintoshes are slowly becoming a thing of the past. All that aside, I just don't have much to gain from using a Mac. Even if I wanted to run, say, Adobe software, which isn't available on Linux, it's available on Windows, which I can run on the computer I already own. To me, a lot of the advantages of macOS are just minor quality of life things, and some of them are only advantageous if you're already immersed in the Apple ecosystem. Reason number three, customization. Look, I'm a bit of a nerd. I like tinkering and experimenting with technology. With Linux and free software, there's a lot of potential to tailor the system to your taste. The r slash Unix porn subreddit demonstrates the kind of setups people have achieved. While Windows has tools like Raymeter and Wallpaper Engine, fundamentally you're using the same desktop and operating system as everyone else. With Linux, you're not just limited to surface level customization. You can modify core system components like the kernel and the bootloader, and different systems will have different modifications based on the user's priorities. Modifying your computer is a bit like when car guys modify their car. You don't need to modify your car or know how cars work to drive one, but it can make the driving experience more fun, even if you're only driving on the road. Likewise, building a PC isn't mandatory. 
but people enjoy the process because they get to customise and tailor their hardware to their tastes. It's a similar thing with Linux, just on the software side rather than the hardware side. Now, some people don't care about customization. Some people just want to install Ubuntu or Linux Mint and get on with their life. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But it's nice to have the choice regardless of whether you actually do it or not. Reason number four, because it's cool. This kind of ties into reason three, but when I really dove into Linux, I discovered a bunch of things I didn't even know were possible on my computer. Things like editing video without a video editor, passing a graphics card into a virtual machine, emulating x86 software on ARM, running programs in a terminal, and even replacing your computer's BIOS. While not all of those things are specific to Linux, I probably wouldn't know about them if I wasn't a Linux user. A lot of these things are possible due to developers like Leah Rowe, the founder of Libreboot, and Petit Seb, the developer behind Box64. There are also different implementations of Linux. Now, I don't do distro reviews because I don't find most distros particularly interesting, but some of them do things differently like Cubes OS, Alpine, Gentoo, NixOS, and Vanilla OS. The flexibility of Linux means it can also run on a lot of niche hardware. If you want to run a modern OS on Intel Itanium, Spark, PowerPC, or RISC-V, chances are it's going to be some form of Linux or BSD. And finally, reason number five, reduced dependence. A lot of the software I use is cross-compatible. If for some reason I can't use Linux or I decide I don't want to use Linux, most of the software I run is available on Windows, macOS, and even more obscure systems like FreeBSD. So no matter the OS I use, the tools I use are there. Although I don't want to use something else, I know that I can if necessary. You might see this as a bad thing because I technically don't need Linux, but I see this software intercompatibility as a good thing. It means I use Linux because I want to, not because I have to. In contrast, a lot of people are stuck on Windows because the software they use is only available on Windows. Speaking of Windows, I was already using a lot of free software when I was a Windows user. At the time, I only used them because they were free as in price, and I didn't really care about the whole freedom aspect. But I got used to the software, and I would voluntarily use it, even when other tools were available. So once I started using Linux, I didn't have to learn a whole new workflow. That's it for today's video, and until next time, cheerio.